By the gods. What can it be? He barely heard Grain ask. The sea doesn't care, Ifek said, watching the dark mass move toward them. He looked around his ship. All of the masts were broken, and it appeared that half the crew was already gone. What? Not many Kaji take to the sea, he said. They'll bear it for trade, to move Skuma around, but few there are who love her. But I've adored her since I could mule. And I love her, because she doesn't care what the gods or Daedra think. She's another world, with her own rules. What are you going on about? I'm not sure, he admitted. I feel it, I don't think it. But don't you think, doesn't it feel like? He didn't finish. He didn't need to. Grain stared out toward the thing. I see it, now, she said. Yes. I saw an oblivion gate open once, she said. When my father worked in Leavian. I saw things, it feels a little like that. But Martin's sacrifice, they say it can't happen again. And it doesn't look like a gate. It wasn't shaped like a thunderhead, if it realized. More like a fat cone, point down. Another wind was starting up, and on it something unbelievably foul. It doesn't matter what it is, he said. Not to us. And a few instants later it didn't. Sol's throat hurt, so he knew he had been screaming. He was soaked in sweat, his chest ached, and his limbs were trembling. He opened his eyes and forced his head up so he could see where he was. A man stood in the doorway with a drawn sword. His eyes were very wide and blue beneath a shock of curly, barley-colored hair. Swearing, Sol reached for his own weapon where it hung on the bedpost, 